Welcome to our regular Sunday evening session on Abide in Beauty. My name is Les Miller and I am honored to be with you this evening to guide you through a new work for us. This is The Call of St. Matthew by Michelangelo Merisi di Caravaggio. Visio Divina is the Latin phrase for divine seeing. We are asked in this prayer method to gaze with the eyes of our heart upon sacred scenes to contemplate the presence of God. Prepare yourself for this Visio Divina by making sure that your prayer environment is suitable and that you won't be disturbed for the duration of this activity. Settle yourself in an appropriate prayer space. Center yourself in quiet prayer. And open yourself to the flow of the Holy Spirit. Gaze at the image. What details do you notice? What's going on in the scene? What feeling does it evoke? Where do you sense the sacred in this painting at our first viewing? Let's read the passage depicted here, Matthew 9, 9 to 12. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. How does this reading help you to make sense of this scene? Engage your imagination by entering into the scene as one of the seven figures. Place yourself in his body. Who are you? What do you see from that perspective? What do you hear? What are you feeling?
let's add another layer of understanding to this canvas. Caravaggio painted this masterpiece in around 1600 for a chapel in the church of San Luigi de Francese in Rome. He painted Christ on the right hand side of the painting pointing toward the figure gathered around the table. With his back to us, we see St. Peter imitating Christ's gesture with his hand. The hand of Christ might look familiar to you. It's an artistic quotation of the painting that appears in the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, which is found about a kilometer away from this church, the creation of Adam. Jesus is the new Adam. St. Peter is Christ's representative on earth, who is given the keys to the kingdom, the first pope. Here, he is imitating Jesus in his hand gesture. Jesus calls, and the church, echoing Jesus' message, also calls. The Italian title of the painting, La Vocazione di San Matteo, gives us a clue as to what's happening here. It is a calling or vocation. In this specific case, Jesus is calling Matthew to follow him, to be one of his disciples. In the general case, Jesus is calling all of us to our vocation to love. Will the real St. Matthew stand up? <laughs> There's ambiguity about which figure is St. Matthew. Art historians have long debated which of these characters is St. Matthew. The leading contender seems to be the man with the beard pointing to himself. There are other depictions of St. Matthew with a beard, some very close to him in that same chapel. But it could also be the young man on the left-hand side of the scene with his head pointed at the table counting his money. In that case, the man with the beard would be pointing at him saying, who, him? One of the curious things about this group of people around the table is their different ages, ranging from a childlike figure with a feather in his cap to the old person who's half standing over the table on the left-hand side. So another theory has it that all of these people are Matthew at different stages of his life. All of us have this call from Christ to follow him, to realize our vocation to love. Caravaggio would have identified with St. Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. That's a man of poor standing in this Galilean culture. These tax collectors would have had the reputation of defrauding people and collaborating with the Romans, the occupying force. A sinner. Similarly, Caravaggio had a bad reputation in Rome. He was known for his violent temper, and only after a few years after the canvas was completed, he had to flee Rome because he'd killed someone in a duel. So in a sense, these five characters, these five Matthews, may be self-portraits of Caravaggio. Pope Francis has named this painting as one of his favorites. He points out the mercy that Christ shows to the sinful Matthew. It's the same mercy that's extended to all of us. The motto of Pope Francis is, having mercy, he called him. This comes from a sermon from St. Bede, 
on this particular gospel passage. Two final notes of interest about this canvas. Notice the window above the scene. It shows the cross and its significance for the Christian life. Secondly, compare the clothing of the five figures around the table with that of Jesus and Peter. The figure seated around the table would have been entirely in the fashion in 1600 in Rome. But the robes of Peter and Jesus speak to a biblical time. Caravaggio's call of St. Matthew spans the centuries and indeed resonates with us today. How are we called? We've been adding layers of understanding about the calling of St. Matthew. Let's move back from the details and all these layers of understanding to contemplate the whole painting, the whole experience of contemplating the painting. So gently gaze at the image. How do you find the sacred here? Has it opened a new awareness? For what are you grateful? Let's rest in this sacred space. Prayer is completed in action. How does this prayer experience connect with your life? How can your insights help others? Which ideas or parts of this image do you most want to carry with you? May God bless us all with the eyes to see the sacred presence around us. And may God help us to respond to the vocation to love.